In the last episode, two of my carpenter ant queens named Aunt Bonnie and Queen Midas had finally succeeded in starting their own colonies. This is a milestone that an estimated 95% of new queens never reach. Let's start with Queen Midas and her firstborn daughter. She has not eaten in over three months, so I think it's time we give the colony their first meal, a drop of honey. When I put the honey in their tube, they were a bit on edge. The queen was not having it. But her daughter bravely ventured towards the mysterious object to investigate. You can see her stretching out her little legs as far as she possibly can, then decided, nope, not worth it. After psyching herself up for a while, she finally found the courage to go for it. And hey, this stuff's pretty good. Mom stayed back to guard the eggs. It was amazing to watch her gaster inflate with honey. You can see the difference before and after. Ants actually have two stomachs, one for their own digestion and a social stomach to hold food to share with others in the colony. You're about to see what that process looks like. Once she had her fill, it was time to feed the queen. This is called trophallaxis, and it's a lot better with sound effects. Told you. Now that Queen Midas and her daughter have been fed, I'm going to put them back in the box for now, along with the Queen of the Relic Raiders, who I've been leaving undisturbed since she's way behind the other two in development. As for the Golden Galleons, however, they have six workers and can now be left outside the box. But I can't quite move them into a formicarium like this until their numbers increase. Ants like tight spaces. So for now, I'm going to connect this small outworld box to their test tube to make feeding time a lot easier. And there we go. This will be their new setup until they outgrow their test tube. I'll go ahead and give them a bit of protein. The next few weeks were really cool to watch the colonies grow. You can see the workers taking care of the brood, moving them around, sometimes they even sort them into little piles. Queen Midas has a lot of workers on the way now. You can even see this one inside her cocoon that could hatch any day. After about a month, I checked in on Laura Croft, the Queen of the Relic Raiders. To my surprise, she was vigorously pulling at the cotton, which was very unusual. I thought maybe she was hungry, so I gave her some honey. This is when I realized that her eggs were still eggs. They hadn't even developed into larvae. Now this made sense. I concluded that she is infertile, and decided to release her outside. The next day, however, I found that she was still there, guarding her brood. I wasn't sure what to do, so I let her stay in the tube. I've tried several times to release her, but sadly her instincts tell her to keep caring for her babies that will never hatch. I've decided the best thing to do is to bury the test tube and let nature run its course. This again highlights just how few colonies make it to maturity in the wild. Only two of my original five queens were able to start a colony. And I love these two colonies. Thanks to some fellow ant keepers in the comments, I've been able to identify both species. The minions of Midas are Campanotus CaO2. Campanotus is the genus for carpenter ants, and CaO2 is a temporary label because the species has not yet been officially named or described scientifically. They also happen to be the largest species in the United States. The Golden Galleons belong to Campanotus vicinus, a western carpenter ant species that form large colonies with large majors. Originally, I incorrectly thought that she was a golden carpenter ant, hence the name Golden Galleons. But as you can see, they are not gold. So I'm wondering if I should rename the colony, but keep the pirate theme. Open to ideas in the comments. The fact that they're different species allows me to observe variations in behavior. For example, the Golden Galleons love to eat fruit flies, and the minions of Midas will literally move fruit flies from their food dish to their garbage pile. The minions are usually spread out in their tube, whereas the galleons tend to huddle up. Discovering these behavior patterns is so much fun for me, which is why, before ant season is over, I'd like to introduce a new member to our ant family. There's a very special species that I've had my eye on for a while now, but we'll save that for next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>